everyone. It is, thank you. Uh, it is Wednesday, June 5th at 6.32 p.m. And this is a meeting of GOL, a special meeting of GOL to conduct interviews for the Charter Review Committee uh, appointment recommendations. I'm gonna go ahead and call on my fellow committee members just to make sure that they are emotionally present and uh, also that we can hear and uh, see them as well. So, Councilor Ryan. I'm here. Thank you. Lynn Griesmer. Present. Thank you. Pat DeAngelis. Present. And Councillor Ette. Present. All right, great. Um, we have one, two, three, four, five, six interviews today that we will be conducting. Um, folks, I know yesterday they went a bit faster than anticipated. So I did reach out to um, folks yesterday and say to say if you can come early. Um, great. And if not, you know, we understand because we gave you a time, but um, hopefully folks will be able to, to join us earlier and we can continue to move through. Um, we are going to start with our 630 appointment, which is Patrick. Uh, Athena, are you able to bring Patrick into the room? Yeah. Hi. Hi, Patrick. And if you could please just confirm that you can hear us and how to pronounce your last name, please. And you'll just have to unmute when you get a chance. Yes, mute right. video. Okay. All the things, hi there. Yeah. Hi, so yes, my last name, we pronounce it Mayor. Mayor, great, thank you. Um, all right, Patrick, thanks so much for joining us. And uh, we have six questions that we'll go through today. We ask that you keep your responses to these questions between one to two minutes. Um, mm -hmm. And George will hold up his phone if you hit the two minute timer um, as a warning. Um, and we will, um, we won't have opportunity to engage in a back and forth or ask follow-up questions because we're really trying to make sure the process is standard for everyone. So I will be asking you the questions um, and it's pretty straightforward. Does that sound okay? Fine. All right, great. That was a bonus seventh question, I guess. Okay, so first up is, uh, what is your understanding of the role of the Charter Review Committee? Are there particular areas that you see as strengths, weaknesses, or missing elements to the Charter? Yeah, well, I, I think the, uh, the committee is designed to uh, see if the charter, to what extent it is or is not adequate to the needs of the governance of the town. And, and to do that, uh, one needs not only to, do, to you know, research the, uh, the relevant laws and the charter itself, but talk to people. And there's a big uh, component of public outreach, which I think is appropriate um, and, and very much desirable. Uh, the charter, what I see is a, is a town that has um, uh, vast responsibilities in, in comparison to the what seems to me the resources that it has, a, a town council that's uh, paid a stipend and takes on uh, things that, that in the state that I came from uh, before would have been handled by a large, robust, powerful county. So it's an interesting setup. It's also a challenge. Um, and it may explain why things happen, like a lot of rules don't appear to be enforced. Uh, or, you know, we have difficult relationships with the institutions of higher learning. Um, and I think uh, I would endorse some of the League of Women Voters uh, recommendations, like term limits, uh, the council having access to legal counsel, uh, a council. Um, maybe addressing the council's size, uh, the, the town manager's uh, tenure, uh, and, and maybe looking at the possibility of going to a, a system with a mayor um, as opposed to a town manager as, as the chief executive. I haven't made up my mind on all those, obviously, but I, I would like to explore how we might uh, find you know better ways to get things done using the tools that are available and are likely to be available to the to the town. Thank you. Based on the selection guidance, what experiences and or skills do you feel you bring to the Charter Review Committee that can make it successful? Well, I, ha I have a very wide comparative experience of these things. Um, and that's, you know, that's mostly through research and analysis and, and advising. And that's also largely almost entirely uh, in foreign countries. So I, I work as a consultant for 
groups like the World Bank and and various uh, mm -hmm. government uh, and aid agencies. Um, and so I've I've looked uh, I've actually co-authored a book on decentralization, which looks at the relationship of local government to higher level governments, including provincial or state and national. And so there I I get I get what the issues are with uh, fiscal resources and accountability. Um, and um, uh, so that's that's one part of it. The other would be uh, I think the the questions asked about about uh, well the, there's uh, a desire to have someone who, who can work with teams, which I do regularly. It's always with uh, uh, it's always with teams. I, I've led teams. I've been part of teams uh, and uh, have helped to bring things to a you know, to a successful conclusion uh, in that regard. So those would be, uh, and I've had some experience in the town, but I think that's uh, another question. So why don't I stop there? So next question is, how do you stay informed and up to date about town affairs? Uh, well, I keep my ear to the ground, uh, so to speak. Um, so I, you know, I read some of the local papers. Uh, I, um, I've attended virtually a number of the council sessions and provided some comments and questions. And I talked to a lot of people. It's just amazing how uh, in two and a half years of living here, we've just been, my wife and I have been immersed in the social and political life of the community. Uh, so we got, you know, recruited for various burning town issues. Um, you know, even even before we actually moved in, um, so those are the various ways, and there are a lot of neighborhood and and town social events that I attend, and the, and town government is always a big topic. So at least I know from a few different points of view uh, some of the things that are going on. That's not a complete picture, of course, but it uh, gives me a sense of what the you know what the stakes are and what some of the big the big issues are the town has to face. Thank you. Um, can you tell us about an experience that you have had collaborating with a group? What did you like about it? What did you find challenging? Uh, I guess um, maybe the, maybe I'll cite two of them. Uh, one of them was uh, leading a, a review of this big um, nonprofit um, What's it called? It's like an international stakeholder group called the um, Open Government Project. It's got donors from all over the world. It's got very high level people working for it. And it's about responsiveness of government governments to their citizens. And so I, I led a team of, uh, I guess there were five of us doing this, this review and we had to, you know, we had to reach a chord on what we were going to say. We had to Allocate different pieces of the uh, of the work and uh, uh, kind of come to a consensus on some of the issues that we didn't quite agree on. What was right? What was wrong? How do how do you think about this? What's the structure supposed to be of the organization and its goals? Another more recent thing would be working with um, a circle of care uh, to resettle a, a refugee family in in, in Springfield. And so that had to do with, you know, what's our mandate? What are our resources? What can we do? What we can't do? Uh, you know, what are the times people will do things? What will they do? And so it was a lot about allocating time, resources, and sort of agreeing on an approach to these uh, to this family, which had very little familiarity with how life is lived here and needed, uh, you know, needed very basic help from the get-go. And there were some you know, there were some heartaches and conflicts over that uh, that had to get uh, discussed and sorted out. Um, so, yeah, the hard part, I guess, was just uh, the amount of work and how tired it made me. Thank you. Uh, please briefly describe two to three activities that you believe should be part of the work plan for this group going forward. So I, I would like to see what the how it would be possible for Amherst to have the the most uh, I don't know the most robust um, use of its powers under state law, and so that means a careful analysis of the 
of the state laws uh, as they relate to town and city levels of government. Uh, uh, also to look at how other towns have done things, which uh, to some extent the League of Women Voters um, have done. And I find that that's a very useful kind of activity. And then it's very important to talk to people, talk to people in other towns and talk to the members of, of the diverse group of communities that uh, that live in Amherst uh, to see what's working and what isn't and sort of translate that into charter language and charter authorities and powers and resources. Um, and it's it's important to know what what the scope is and is not of our uh, of our mandate. Um, but I, I don't want to stop short of it because I, I, I feel like, um, and I know there are smart people who have put together the charter and done this work in the past. Um, so I don't want to sort of dismiss what they've done. I think, you know, what I'm looking for is how do we make this better and how do we resolve some of the issues that, that, that everyone in the town has uh, through uh, maybe some tweaking or redefinition of some structures and powers of, of a town government. Thank you. Is there anything else that you'd like us to know about you that makes you a strong candidate for the Charter Review Committee? Uh, yeah, I'm just, a, you know, I'm just a fine human being. Uh, I think that uh, uh, that's uh, that, that's the key. Um, uh, what else? I do work well. I do play well with others. Um, you know, I, uh, a sense of humor, I think, is always uh, important. So um, that's something that I, I prize uh, and cultivate a lot. Um, what else can I say? Um, I've had a whole lot of experience with a whole lot of different kinds of people. I've taught, I've analyzed, I've worked with my hands. I've, uh, uh, I speak several languages, and so I can reach out to different corners of the community. Um, yeah, I think that's, yeah, I, I, I think that says it. Patrick, thank you so much for joining yeah. us today. I really appreciate uh, hearing from you. And we have a couple more interviews today, and then we will be deliberating on Thursday uh, and making our recommendation to the council who will uh, approve or not approve it. So Great. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you for the opportunity. Have a good luck with the rest. Have a good Thank evening. You. Thank you. You're welcome right. to stick around and Athena can move you back or you can just click leave. Either way works. Thank okay. You. Bye. Bye-bye. Um, all right, folks, are we ready to move? I think our next person is here. Um, so Athena, when you are ready, could you please bring Dan into the room? Hi, Dan. Can you hey, how are you? Good. How are you? Did I ask there you? I am. How are you? There you are. Hi. <laughs> um, all right, Dan, welcome. Um, and we can hear you, which is great. So I don't know if you heard my spiel before, but we've got six questions. I'm going to ask them to you. And if we can keep your responses to between one to two minutes, that would be great. Councilor Ryan will hold up his phone if you uh, go over the over the time, just as a, as a um, heads up. And uh, because we're trying to make sure this is as consistent as possible for all candidates, we are not going to um, have an opportunity for a back and forth or follow up questions. Um, we'll just stick with our six that that are planned. Does that sound OK? Sure. All right. Sounds good. So jumping right in, what is your understanding of the role of the Charter Review Committee? Are there particular elements or areas that you see as strengths, weaknesses or missing elements to the Charter? Well, I think the, the review committee is built into this. The, the charter is a new form of government, a relatively new for the town. And so it seems like a, like a prudent thing to say, let's see how this goes. It's a work in progress. Um, and certainly um, in talking with people in the town, there's, there's some things people think are going well and other things that um, people complain about. It seems like um, getting a broader and more systematic reading of that is um it seems like a vital piece of feedback in this in the process um what do i think is the strengths um i you know i i remain agnostic in a lot of ways i think the general issue is of representation you go from a traditional new england town meeting everyone gets to vote on every issue 
you boil it down to our old form and now you have 200, I, I can't remember how many people were in, in town meeting before, and now you have um, a much smaller number. So this isn't, um, you know, the reasons to do that in terms of efficiency of meetings are understandable, but you um, risk uh, the distance that grows if one person has to represent a, a thousand people. I think there are 13,500 registered voters in the town. So that's simply, a, that's an issue. Um, I, I'm, I was skeptical about it. I mean, I'll be blunt with you from the beginning. I was skeptical about that I issue. Um, I think the jury, the jury is out. Um, so yeah, that's how I see where we are now. Thank you. Based on the selection guidance, what experiences and or skills do you feel you bring to the Charter Review Committee that can make it successful? Well, I think interpersonally, I am both in my work and in my just life in general, I am a person who is, uh, I simply think it's essential to, to listen to other people, to see where other people are coming from. I'm a I'm a self-employed contractor, so um, I've joked for a long time, although it's true that half of my job is often being a couples therapist. If it's a, you know, I'm working for a couple, you people, you've got to help them communicate. They don't always have it, have their act together. Um, so yeah, I, that part is, is really essential. Um, and I think, you know, just honestly, it's just my personality. I'm, I'm a New Yorker and I, I talk to people. I talk to strangers. I, it's kind of just wired into me. Um, so, yeah, that's, you know, the, 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 I've been through so many processes, not as many in larger groups, but the, you know, this, the issue of, of doing a house renovation, whatever is an enormous amount of communication and collaboration. So, um, that is kind of my, my forte, I think. Thank you. How do you stay informed and up to date about town affairs? Um, I read the bulletin. I read the Indy um, occasionally and the Gazette. Um, I, <laughs> I read the New Yorker, although I've been told <laughs> that there was an article about the town and that I haven't read yet. Um, and I, I, I talk to people, you know, I, I've, uh, I've spoken with some of the town councilors. I speak with my neighbors. I talk to people who've involved with uh, town issues. Um, I, I'm not going to say that it has been, uh, I'm not a uh, town political junkie. I'm not at it constantly, but it certainly has been, you know, and frankly, uh, part of the reason I'm, I'm, I've applied for this, I've lived here 26 years and I've paid my taxes, but I feel like I haven't, um, I haven't given back in the way that, um, that I think is proper. So, um, that's, uh, I'm, I'm paying more attention than I did when I had young kids. Thank you. Can you tell us about an experience you've had collaborating with a group? What did you like about it? What did you find challenging? Um, I guess, uh, two things come to mind. I ran the, the Valley Community Development Corporation had a um, self-help housing program. And this was back when I first moved here. So I taught people to build their own houses and that required, and it wasn't just individuals, but there was a group of five different families all working on each other's houses. So that required a lot of, um, of navigating people's personalities and sometimes conflicting um, agendas. And um, more recently, I was uh, I worked on the um, the reparations committee at the Jewish community of Amherst um, from the beginning until for the first year and a half, and that was um, you know, I think what was good about it was you know engaging with other people who were studying something I was interested in. Um, they're great, really great people. Um, about a very important issue. Um, what was challenging was, I think that the the the, the mandate of that committee was was um, determined by the people who started it, 
And that's, you know, there is, that's the way things work in the world. And I think there was a point at which I had to accept that I was working within their framework. And I did that for quite a while, um, but came to feel like, um, that's a role that, yeah, there's, that's a, a more limited role. If, if other people are kind of determining the, 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 the framework that you're working in, you, um, that can be challenging. Um, and it's, it's a huge subject, which I, I don't, we couldn't go into, um, here, but, um, so I don't know if that answer makes sense, but. Mm -hmm. It does. Thank you. Um, please briefly describe two or three activities that you think should be part of the work plan for this group. Um, I think that, I mean, I was, I was thinking about this in particular, that the way that we gather information or the government gathers information is, you know, we have petitions, we have referendum, we have votes. My ideal thing is really, I mean, I think one of the things that was mentioned is uh, focus groups. The, the more, uh, the more in person uh, and preferably one-on-one -on -one interactions you can have with people, I think the more you really learn about how they see things, what they want. Um, obviously that's, that can only be a piece of this because there's a lot of people and only a few people on the committee and not tons of time, but I, I consistently in my life find that um, that's where really understanding people comes from. So I, you know, I think I would like to see a lot of that. Um, yeah, I mean, focus groups, surveys, um, you know, I guess people's willingness to actually engage is, varies enormously. So you may get only a little bit of someone's time if you get any at all. Um, so, yeah, I would think a, a variety of things are needed. Thank you. Uh, is there anything or what else would you like us to know about you that makes you a strong candidate for the Charter Review Committee? Um, I think what I've said, I, I am, <laughs> I've been thinking recently that, that for all that I uh, like to read and learn about the world, I've learned at least as much just from talking to people and seeing what the world looks like through their eyes. I, I that simply is a, like, has always been a priority of mine. Um, uh, I think I have a pretty good sense of humor. So that, that helps out um, when, when, if the going gets tough. Um, so no, uh, that's, uh, I think that's, uh, I think that's me. And thanks so much. Really appreciate talking to you uh, and, sure. and taking the time this evening. You are okay. welcome to stick around if you'd like to, um, but if you have other things to do on your Wednesday night, totally understand. Um, Athena can move you back to the audience or you can just click the leave button either way is, is totally fine. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much, appreciate it. All right, folks. So our next um, interview is not until, 710. Um, and so I'm going to say I, when I emailed folks, I asked them to, uh, if they could get here early, um, to get here about 10 to 15 minutes early. So I'm going to say that we take a break until seven. Um, and then we'll check back in at that point. If, uh, the person is not here, we'll break until 710. Does that sound okay? All right. So I'll check. I will holler at you in five minutes. Otherwise let's get back here or yeah, get back here at seven. Okay. Bye.
for those in the audience who are just joining us, we're taking a short break. Our next um, interview is at 7.10, so we're in a short recess. Thanks. All right, folks, it is seven o'clock and it looks like our um, 710 interview isn't here yet, which is totally understandable. Um, so I'm gonna extend your break to 710. Go ahead and take a walk, stretch your legs. I will see you at seven. Let's come back at 708, please, so that we are, we are here and ready to go. 708, see you then.
All right, I'm gonna invite GOL folks to come on back when you are ready. Even if you're not ready. My dog has chosen to sit underneath the desk in front of me and keeps getting up and hitting her head on it, which feels like she's trying to manipulate me to petting her, but also keeps jarring my computer. So sorry for the shaking. I'm gonna wait for Councillor Ette and Councillor Ryan. Hello, hello. All right. Hello, Councillor Ryan. All right, um, it is 7.10. I'm not seeing, if our 7.10 interview is the phone number in the audience, it's feel not. free to, okay, <laughs> thanks. It was worth a shot. Um, okay, I oh. do think there are they, they, yep, awesome. All right, we can bring Erica into the room. Welcome, Erica. Please uh, let us know that you can hear us and then we will know that we, we we can hear you. And please let us know how your last name is pronounced. Hi, my name is Erica Midland. Hello, um, thanks so much for coming uh, and joining us today. Um, we, my name is Anna, I'm the chair of the committee um, and we've got a set of six questions that we're going to be asking um, today. And because we're really striving for consistency amongst interviews, we aren't gonna have a back and forth or any follow-up questions. We're just gonna kind of go through the six interviews that were in the, um, the uh, six interview questions that were in the packet that we sent you. Sure. Uh, sound okay? Sounds good. Right. Excellent. Uh, oh yeah, thank you. And um, we ask that you keep your responses to between one to two minutes and Councillor Ryan, who's, well, he's in the corner on my screen. I don't know where he is on yours. We'll hold up his phone uh, if we hit the two minute mark for you. Okay. Okay. So starting off, what is your understanding of the role of the Charter Review Committee? Are there particular areas that you see as strengths, weaknesses, or missing elements to the Charter? Uh, my understanding of the role of the Charter Review Committee um, is to conduct a kind of um, assessment of uh, what those strengths and weaknesses might be, um, taking into consideration the different perspectives of the people on the committee, but also public uh, input as much as possible from what I understand in the description, which I think is the is a, a strong part of what I feel is in, um, what I hope will be an important component um, of the review committee. Um, as far as the, um, the strengths, weaknesses of the charter itself, um, I, I am most, I, I'm not sure I can say, but I think that I feel most strongly about the pieces of the charter that have to do with public, uh, public participation, public communication, transparency, uh, kind of civic engagement, um, and how the public can can and does interact with all the components of the town organization, including committees, town council, engagement with town manager, and other entities or bodies within the town government. So I'm interested in the charter as a sort of description of how we govern ourselves, and I'm interested in the charter review committee as a kind of now that we have a few years into this laboratory of, of this new form of government, really looking at the five years, six years as kind of evidence and how it's how we're really living with it and what's working and what isn't. Thank you. Based on the selection guidance, what experiences and or skills do you feel you bring to the Charter Review Committee that can help make it successful? Sure. Um, I uh, I think I have a collaborative nature, um, but I do have 
real lived experience in working with uh, working in committees. Um, in a previous life, I'm not currently in, in academia, but in a previous life I was and served on a lot of committees for kind of faculty governance or academic policy, that sort of thing. So I have some experience in in working in committees, and that's you know the the good, bad, and ugly of that, and how um how how that can go, and how how to set agendas, how to set timing, how to um, manage difference of opinion and working style and everything else. Um, so I have I think I have that to bring, uh, but I kind of believe in it as a as a principle, so as a way of as a way of working through um, big complicated ideas and documents and things. So I have that. I also I also have other kinds of skills that I mentioned in my statement of interest that have to do with um, uh, my experience in media and technology and um, working with. Uh, I'm certainly not a web developer, but working with web creating websites and surveys, databases, and other kinds of mechanisms for both collecting, analyzing, to maybe facilitate some of the work of the committee or to enable or enhance the ways of communicating to and from the public what the Charter Review Committee is doing. Thank you. How do you stay informed and up to date on town affairs? Uh, well, I subscribe to the Hampshire Gazette um, so I guess I, I'm kind of an avid reader, um, and I, so I follow what's happening there. Um, I'm also, um, I also follow various, uh, representatives in social media to sort of see how people are, um, representing some of the things that they're doing while in office or in serving in committees. Um, I followed closely lots of the workings of the school committee over the past, um year and two or two years maybe um and some of the difficult um challenges that they have been facing um i have also been in i've also worked as a poll worker i mean i've i kind of try to stay involved in in um town activities as much as i can i observe some of the zoom the zoom meetings uh i was i was uh, secretly um glad when some of those meetings got semi-permanently converted to uh, virtual, you know, um, virtual convenings so that I, I thought there was, made them more widely accessible in a really interesting way. Um, so those are some of the ways that I, that I try to stay in touch. Thank you. Can you tell us about an experience that you've had collaborating with a group? What did you like about it? What did you find challenging? Sure. Um, as I think I, well, yeah, I mentioned earlier, so I've done a lot of committee work in particular um, while working in, um, in an academic setting. It's not the, my only experience, but it's what comes to mind because we did in, in one of my last academic positions, we did a an intensive bylaw review, uh, meaning kind of really looking at what were the governing bylaws for the body of the faculty this was an, not at a large university, which was governed by a lot of outside entities, but a small sort of self-governing college. And so there was there was a that's an interesting difference in scale um, because pe the people who were the people who were doing the bylaw review were actually actively you know engaged in the very same entities that they were that they were those bylaws that they were governed by. Um, and so that made for some interesting tension and the very different approaches in the room uh, as to what this the mechanics of what you do when you're reviewing legal lang legalistic language like that. Like the some people get very invested in what certain words um, mean and parsing that language really closely. And some people get more invested in the sort of the spirit of the law, so to speak, and balancing that tension between um when it's important to to spell things out really clearly and when it's important to get a sense of the room or a sense of the committee or a sense of the um a sense of the people that it will impact and that was a big part of what we did was to work closely as a group and then regularly sort of report back 
to the larger faculty body to say, these are the things that we're finding. These are the things that we feel are not clearly spelled out. These are the, these are the places where we as a body feel vulnerable, or these are the places where we feel like we could tighten up or make things more democratic. Um, and so that, that was my experience. Sometimes it was difficult because like I said, people have a different working style. Um, but for the most part, I, I, I saw the warning, but for the most part, I felt that it was, um, productive, revealing, uh, interesting. And we came out with some, we came out with some good answers. Thank you. Uh, please briefly describe two or three activities that you believe should be part of the work plan for this group. I think first and foremost, setting a, uh, a reasonable but ambitious calendar uh, timeline for the trajectory of the review and how that work is going to be divided. I saw that the the there's a sort of initial and final, there's multiple stages to the reporting. And so I would be really interested in making sure that we set a calendar uh, pretty early on as to how that work's going to be um, segmented. That's one thing. Um, but uh, more importantly, I would think that it, it might be interesting rather than just sort of um, jumping into the document and going from A to Z uh, is to take a moment to pull out some of what the, I'm assuming that all the people that are gonna be entering this committee have lot, have a, a, a set of issues and themes in mind that, that, um, that are that justify why they feel invested in doing this work. And it would be interesting to sort of pull all of those out to the front and see where we're at as a group. And also to set out right away to enlist and solicit public engagement. I'm really interested in that piece. And to, as I said earlier, when, right, the charter was once a hypothetical. Um, and this is the, this being, um, a kind of review of the living laboratory of the charter in action, um, I would be really interested in the pieces that have to do with soliciting public sentiment as to how how is it going? Um, how is it how is it living with this form of government as opposed to others that people have lived with in Amherst or other places? Thank you. What else would you like us to know about you that makes you a strong candidate for the Charter Review Committee? Um, I, I came to Amherst as the, this transition was happening, the transition to this form of government. And, um, I live with someone who has, who has lived and worked in Amherst for 30 years. So that difference has been really interesting. Um, the kind of getting, I've gotten a very long range view of some of the issues and challenges and promises of Amherst for a long time. And yet I bring a kind of um, a more recent perspective. I feel really invested in the present and future of the town. Um, I'm not a person who believes in kind of like burning down the past to go to the future, but uh, neither am I feel, you know, resistant to the future. So I feel like I have, I bring a lot of different perspectives. I've lived in big cities and I've lived in country towns and now I'm living in this very unique place. And so um, I bring all of that. Erica, thank you so much for speaking with us. I really appreciate you taking the time. And um, you are welcome to stay for the rest of the interviews. We've got a couple more tonight. Um, or you can, and Athena will move you back to the audience uh, either way, or you can uh, click leave as soon as you want. Um, we've got a couple more today, and then we are planning to deliberate and make a recommendation to the council tomorrow. The council will take this up at a, at a later meeting. Um, so Great. good. A little bit more time to go, but almost there. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you all. Good to meet you. Thank you. Um, okay, we're going to go on. It looks like our next uh, interview is here as well. So Athena, if you could bring Ken into the room, that would be great. Hi, Ken. Hi. How are you? I'm good. How are Hi. you? 
I'm doing well. All right. So um, I think that you caught my spiel uh, before, but I'm going to give it again just for consistency's sake. Please do. Uh, we are going to, we've got six questions for you today. We're going to ask that you keep your responses to each question to one to two minutes. Uh, Councilor Ryan will hold up his phone and let you know as a time warning if you're at the two minute mark. Because we are seeking consistency with every interview, we won't have a back and forth or follow-up questions okay. uh, to, to the ones we asked today. Okay. Sound good? Yeah. All right, thank you. So starting right off, what is your understanding of the role of the Charter Review Committee? Are there particular areas that you see as strengths, weaknesses, or missing elements to the Charter? Um, so I've been in Amherst for about 12 years. Um, I was there for the pre I was here for the previous form of government before the current charter um, took effect. Um, so far, I've been impressed with the form of government. Um, um, and that's based on how I've uh, consumed information through newspapers, through friends, um, through whatever, whatever information sources I'm getting. Um, I, I, you know, but to be honest, I've, I've, I have attended some meetings, some, for instance, some council meetings, and I do keep uh, a somewhat close tab on, and this is jumping ahead to another answer, but um, in terms of people posting on social media and what the town is sharing on social media, it's, um, it's part of what's, what's going on here. Um, I, I, I don't attend meetings at any great frequency. Um, when they're germane to my interest, I certainly am involved. Um, and and um, typically watch it on Amherst Media uh, the next day. Um, I want to say that, um, and, and that's to explain that I'm I'm I don't have specific strengths, weaknesses, or missing elements that I that I I necessarily want to go into at the moment. Um, but I want you to know that I'll join the committee with a very open mind. Um, I'll be looking for the best ways that the, that the government can serve um, the voters. Um, even the town hall staff, but also you as an elected official, um, what will best serve you um, in in turning turning around and serving us as voters? Thank you. Mm -hmm. Based on the selection guidance, what experiences or skills do you feel you bring to the Charter Review Committee that can help make it successful? Um, for about 25 years, um, my professional life has been centered on public service, um, whether that be uh, working in, gov in governments at the, the local, the municipal level, to the county level, to the state level, to the federal level. Um, I consider that public service. Um, I also consider volunteering public service. Um, and I have done that for many years in my life, um, but most recently in Amherst with a couple of organizations, um, the Amherst Education Foundation, but also the um, Amherst A Better Chance, um, which I still continue to volunteer for uh, in fundraising and also programming. Um, I think that, and I'll I'll I'll, I'll wait to to expound on that in a, in a, a later question, but. Um, I think my specific skills that I could bring to the Charter Committee um, are skills that I've honed, I guess, professionally and kind of personally my whole life, and that's the skills of listening, um, of synthesizing what I've heard, what people have said, um, decoding it if necessary, um, because, um, and, and, and I want to make clear, I'm going to use the word bureaucracy, and I do not use it as a as a slang term, I, I use it because that's what it is. Um, it, it's, I, it, there's, there's no criticism um, suggested by it. Um, bureaucracy can be very confusing um, because there's so much um, accountability that needs to happen. Um, and people don't uh, often understand what's going on. Why do we, why things happen the way they do and what caused this to happen? That doesn't make any sense. Um, I find that a challenge, um, a, a challenge that I'm up for. Um, to um, to better relate the workings of government. Again, this is going back to my professional career. I'm a communications person by by trade. Um, synthesi listening, synth synthesizing, decoding if needed. Um, the processes through which a committee like the Charter Committee um, to make that process more understandable to the public, more relevant to the public or to whomever the stakeholders are. Um, so I guess the bottom line is I'm a really good listener. Um, that doesn't mean I don't speak up, um, but that's, I think my, um, that's my special skill. Thank you so much. Can you tell us about an experience you have had collaborating with a group? What do you like about it? What do you find challenging? 
Um, I, you know, I thought about this question. I can't really pinpoint it down to one particular group, but I will say, I'll give you some general, um, some general experiences that I think, um, make it, make something enjoy, make a collaboration enjoyable. And what, what doesn't make, what makes it not enjoyable. Um, I find it crucial, um, in a group that first the group needs to understand why it's there. That may seem seem so obvious, but the 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 charge or the mission of the group really needs to be understood in, um, by by everybody in the group. First and foremost, that may take three seconds in some cases. That may take an entire meeting to figure it out. Um, leadership roles, other types of roles that need to be occupied within the within a a committee or a group to make that um, to make that committee function internally. Those things are so important to establish at first. When they're not, no one, when they're not established, no one really knows what to do and who's supposed to be taking notes and who's supposed to be asking questions and calling the meeting to order and 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 reminding people the next meeting, all these things. These are all so so basic, but when they get lost or get missed, um, the 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 committee or the, the group itself can really falter. Um, and we can kind of spin around um, with our gears stripped. Um what I also like about coming into groups, some some groups I've come into that I've I've had to collaborate or be a member of, um, I've had my own ideas about what we're supposed to do, about what we're supposed to accomplish, and that isn't always the best thing because I will come in and then I'll hear the perspective of somebody else and I'll go, well, why didn't I think of that? Or what a great point! I never would have thought of that, or that's a completely different angle on it. Those kinds of moments are really important for me because I then not only is my mind expanding as far as what the breadth of the issue is or what could be done as a possible solution or before a solution to even describe the issue or the problem that we're working with. Um, those things open my mind to those things, but also builds trust and respect of my fellow um, my fellow group members. I was kind of jumping ahead to the challenging part. I, I can go ahead and answer that if you'd like. <laughs> Well, it's all, I mean, all one, all one all, kind of question. All about, one question. Okay. Yeah. Um, so it's the challenging part is kind of the opposite of, of the part I like. It's, it's when the expectations of the group don't, don't get firmly established. The mission of the group, the charge of the group. Um, when, and when all those necessary roles aren't, all the necessary roles, whether they be leadership or anything else, um, sort of functional roles aren't defined. Um, and then, time sort of gets stretched out and and uh, the time of the group uh sorry the um the times of the group members the um don't get fully respected or, or fully recognized and things can kind of devolve fairly quickly when there's not that that basic amount of order um so again these are sort of the general things that I can say about what I like and what I don't like about um group collaborations thank you mm -hmm. please briefly describe uh Councilor Ryan you skipped a question. I know. I know. Okay. I know. Right. As, long, as long as you know. No, no, no. You're good. My notes are getting too long. Um, that's the that's the problem I'm having. Thank you. Thank you though for pointing that out. Um, how do you stay informed and up to date about town affairs? Um I subscribe to the Daily Hampshire Gazette, subscribe to Mass Live. Uh, I subscribe to the Globe, which isn't wouldn't think that, that would be something that's relevant to Amherst, but occasionally Amherst jumps in there. Um, I follow all the blog, all the local blogs over the last 12 years as they've come and gone. Um, the short termers, the long termers, um, that's just one source. Um, I follow Paul Bockelman's X feed, Twitter feed. I think that's interesting. He doesn't always put out the really dry stuff. He puts the really kind of cool celebratory stuff too. Uh, when Brianna Sunred was, was at, uh, was at the town hall. Um, I followed her pretty religiously as well. Um, and uh, my network of friends, because the friends I keep are friends that I, you know, that I, that I agree with in many ways, or at least agree with the, uh, maybe not always politically, um, but, or policy wise, but they're people who are involved and engaged. They're the ones that are going to say over a beer, hey, did you read that Gazette story? Or did you see what happened at town council? Um, 
we don't shy away from those kinds of discussions and we don't necessarily agree. Um, and um, the last thing, probably the, the, the least frequent is I, I do talk to town, town officials, whether they be elected or appointed um, officials from time to time. Thank you, George. Thanks for keeping me on track here. Uh, please briefly describe two or three activities that you believe should be part of the work plan for this group. Well, I hope you're not shocked to hear that listening is one of the things that I think is important. So in other words, getting feedback. Um, the three major stakeholder groups that I see that I'm I'm personally most interested, in, not speaking for the committee, but I'm personally most interested in are voters, town employees. I I when I originally thought of this answer, I was saying town hall employees. And I didn't mean to say it's just the people in town hall, but really all, all town employees, because they all have to work within that government structure. Um, but also the elected officials. I want to hear from you, all of you, um, about what you think. Um, that's number one. Number two, um, reviewing other town charters with the same or similar, um, uh, sorry, excuse me, re reviewing other towns with similar charters, similar to the same charters. Um, I want to hear as much as we can about their challenges and successes. Um, I, I, I honestly don't know if we're, are we the youngest town? I'm speaking rhetorically, but are we the youngest town with this kind of charter or, or um, are there many towns that have other things? And I know that demographics and politics and so forth will will change how those charters have challenges and successes. Um, and then the thirdly, um, would one at least get a very basic, if not specific understanding of alternate charters? Um, I mentioned that I was here for the previous, um, you know, the previous iteration of the, of the town government. Um, I know that other iterations exist. Um, I would love to be educated on those as part of this. Um, so those are my three. Thank you. Mm -hmm. What else would you like us to know about you that makes you a strong candidate for the Charter Review Committee? Um, the things that all, uh, when I talked about my volunteering and my professional experience, they're all united in, um, in the fact that I want to give that it's, it's it's another way of saying public service, but I've, I've had a strong desire in those 25 years or so to give back, to do something that's positive, constructive. Um, I am not a person who seeks the limelight. I am so happy to be behind the scenes. My my job is a, is a PR person. Um, I often say that if you read my name in the paper saying I'm speaking for my organization, then something's gone horribly wrong because who wants to hear from a PR person? I should be in the background. I should be sticking all the experts in front and speaking to the speaking to the press. Um, I'm very happy in that in that role um, because, quite frankly, the bureaucracy needs needs these people, needs these small gears, and, and I consider myself a small gear and a, and a very much a, a larger, more important uh, machine. Um, so I simply want to be a positive influence in this town. Um, I've got lots of experience in other parts of the country um, at my various levels of government work and and um, volunteering. Um, but I've been in Amherst for 12 years and I've been and I'm raising my two kids here. Um, and not surprisingly, my wife is also a public servant um, because this is what this is kind of one of the things that unites us um, and our interests together. But I care deeply about this town. Um, it's my home and will be my home um, for as long as I can think of or can possibly plan. So um, I think it's that that dedication, that kind of passion for Amherst and my, and my town, my home. Thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, I didn't miss any other ones, right, George? Just making sure. I think I got them all then. All right, great. Thank you. Um, Ken, thanks so much for, for speaking with us. I really appreciate you taking the time. It was it was nice to hear from you You're um, welcome. and responses. So thank you. Good luck. Good luck with your interviews. Thank you. You're welcome to stick around if you'd like. We're probably going to be taking a bit of a, a break after this, and um, or you can leave and attend to the rest of your evening. Either way is fine. But okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Um, all right, committee folks, we have uh, two more today, and um, the next one is scheduled to start at 7.50. Um, and so we can, let's see, it's almost 7.40. Yeah, yeah, let's do five. Yeah, that's a good call. I was doing math in my head. Um, 
All right, we're gonna take five minutes, y'all. Uh, let's return back at 7.43.
Folks, come on back. Hi, Meg. We are waiting for Councillor Ryan. And then, Meg, you will have to unmute when you get a chance. Amazing. All right. All right. Meg, can you hear us? Are you able to unmute? We'll give Meg a minute to get settled and once, wait, Athena, I'm assuming that you're able to send a request to unmute or that you already did that. Oh, I wasn't, okay. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Meg, oh, I, I, was right to... I answered all your questions. You didn't hear me? Oh, there, 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 there we go. No, I have... I'm just trying to get my, uh... I was talking to you and I wondered why you weren't saying anything. <laughs> I'm just a, a very deep, deep listener. Um, okay, there we go. We can hear you and we can see you. Great, thanks so much for joining us today. Sure. Uh, so if uh, my, my spiel that I'm giving is that we've got about six, well, not about, we have six questions exactly for you. And okay. we ask that you keep your responses to each question between one to two minutes. Councilor Ryan will hold up his phone and uh, uh, let you know if you are, um, over your time. I was going to suggest, I still remember uh, the pepper timer method, but um, <laughs> pepper season. So we're using the phone timer. Okay. Uh, all do right. I ask you questions? Uh, it's what I was just about to say is unfortunately oh. to keep these exactly consistent for every candidate, we don't have an opportunity for a back and forth or um, for follow-up questions. You're always welcome to ask individual members of GOL questions that you might have about the work of this committee or things like that. Um, but it won't be part of the interview process. Okay. And okay. All right. Thank you. So we will dive Definitely. right in. Oh, oh, sorry. <laughs> All right. So well, I was first... going to tell you about the league meeting last week, but I'll, I won't. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, I want to hear it another time, maybe. <laughs> um, okay. Yep. So first question is, what is your understanding of the role of the Charter Review Committee? Are there particular areas that you see as strengths, weaknesses, or missing elements to the Charter? Um, I see the Charter Com Review Committee as uh, looking at ways that the um, uh, our town government could be strengthened. Uh, I'm having a hard time not referring to this league, two-hour league discussion I was in uh, Sunday. Um, the, it's quite limited what can be reviewed, but I think there are a number of things that are important, particularly related to the three things that I identified in my letter, um, in, in creating more meaningful participation, greater transparency, and better access of, for, for people to procedures in the government that affect their lives and well-being. Is that too short? <laughs> there's, there's, a limit. No, there's, there's, no controversy. there's a little bit of a difference of opinion about uh, what's in the scope of the Charter Review Committee, whether it has to stick to those things that the uh, are, are allowable or whether it should be more broad, even though those things can't be recommended, but they can be said. So that was interesting about the discussion on Sunday was um, because I raised the question, isn't it some of these things that were listed in the league's goals aren't within the scope? And that's what they said. I don't want to talk more than what is it one minute <laughs> this is why your interviews are shorter than you thought they'd be <laughs> two minutes two minutes okay um all right based on the selection guidance what experiences or skills do you feel you bring to the charter review committee that can make it successful um i have uh 
formally, my formal training, I have years and years of facilitation of meeting participation, of uh, clarity of goals. I've started two large national organizations that involved uh, all of those things. I'm, I have been criticized for being too nice and for not being angry enough at the people I disagree with. As I mentioned in my letter, um, I think I have um, significant analytical skills in um, looking at the root causes of things rather than the symptoms. I could give you some examples of that. Um, I, I think I bring a, a deep commitment to the town I have, I was on the Charter Commission, that's either a plus or a minus, depending on how you look at it. Um, I have uh, been very involved in the schools. I've been very involved in the town. I was uh, the board of, the chair of the board of the Amherst Cinema for the 10 years during which time it was the building. We bought the building and developed it. And um, I'm deeply committed to diversity uh, and, uh, it's hard, it sounds, you know, I've had a lot of experience. <laughs> Thank you. Is that, do you want follow-up questions or no? No follow-up okay. questions. All right. <laughs> Even if we have them. How do you stay informed and up-to-date about town affairs? Um, a variety of things. I read the papers. I attend a number of meetings on Zoom. Uh, occasionally I go in person. I, uh, I'm very involved. I help create the District 1 Neighborhood Association and our, our whole mission is to help people in District 1 and now North Amherst more broadly uh, stay involved. So we're, we work all the time to monitor what's going on and help people know how they can get involved. And that's an area where I think we could do better. I think uh, a lot of people don't, someone will say, well, it was on our website, but people don't necessarily think, I wonder what I don't know about the town that I should look on the website and find out. People don't have that kind of time to just start wondering if there's something happening they should know about. So uh, because of my commitment to helping people stay tuned in, we started the District One Neighborhood Association, which is not really only political, we're also social. We do uh, projects where I'm very involved in the Mill River History Trail Project to create a, uh, a trail telling the history of going back to the pre-indigenous people of all the things that happened uh, along that area and up through the um, most many immigrants who came to Amherst lived in North Amherst. Summer Street was known as Little Lithuania. There were only three homes in the 30s, 1930s, 1940s on Summer Street that didn't speak Lithuanian at home. And uh, it's, it's a very interesting history. So I'm really committed to Amherst history. I'm always trying to find things to do that aren't controversial. I think this controversy stuff is uh, handicapping our ability to solve problems together. It doesn't mean we have to agree. It means we have to know how to disagree. I'm a big proponent of Loretta Ross's calling in rather than calling out culture. I don't know if you've been to her workshops, but she does workshops on if you disagree with people, you should call them into discussion rather than shaming and blaming. And uh, this really, this last few years has been really hard for me because people hold grudges and, uh, it's a shame we're hurting ourselves. Makes me want to kind of say, all right, I'm going to stop all this town stuff and work on climate disaster. Because uh, I don't know, you know, it's really, it's really hard right now and with people piling on. Thank you. That had to be more than two minutes. <laughs> I didn't see the phone go up, so I think you're okay. No. Uh, tell us about an experience. <laughs> tell us about an experience you have had collaborating with a group. What did you like about it and what did you find challenging? In any group? Oh. Uh, recently or any old time? Uh, Anytime. Well, working on the Amherst Cinema was very challenging because people had a lot of different ideas of what we should do. Uh, and some of them weren't rooted in good planning some of them were fanciful. And uh, when you're trying to raise millions of dollars for a project, it's tense, it's difficult to know how much to feed into people's fanciful wishes uh, versus being honest with what's possible and what 
can be done. So we hoped at first to build a live theater and the, we've spent $50,000 on a business plan and there was just no way a live theater in downtown Amherst was gonna make it because you only make money when you sell tickets. And most of the time the theater is being used as for rehearsal, unlike a movie theater where every time you show a movie, you're making money. So we had to disappoint a lot of people, but it helped to invite them into conversation, let them see the business plan, let them see uh, that it wasn't gonna work. Uh, and we luckily had an amazing uh, partner in Barry Roberts who is the whole story of how that worked was pretty unbelievable, but it's longer than two minutes. But he uh, he backed us through that difficult time when we had to change our mind about what we were doing uh, and bring people along to the idea that we were just gonna be a movie theater. I'm not sure, I could give some other more political examples. The Charter Commission was one of them. Um, one of the great things about the Charter Commission was that even though we disagreed and didn't support all of us. We were not unanimous about the report. We we all kind of liked each other, and uh, Andy Churchill created a culture uh, that was uh, people were pretty much respected. There were one or two little problems that actually didn't involve me, where somebody blew up at somebody else. But I thought that was um, I I worked very hard during that process to. Uh, maintain honest communication and honest disagreement, even though I wasn't, you know, I was in the minority in the end on the last charter vote. And it just bugs me that some people are still talking to me about that. Like, say, get over it. But anyway. Um. <laughs> Thank you. Um, please briefly describe two or three activities that you believe should be part of the work plan for this group. For the, for the, the work plan for the Charter for review, the charter review. Um, hmm, I haven't thought about that. Two or three. Uh, well, I think it's important at the beginning. It would be good to see if, the, which we did not do in the charter commission, which would have helped. Uh, there's some things that didn't go well with that process, but it wasn't about not getting along. I think it would be really good to create at the beginning to see if we agree. Worked if I were there on goals, like do we want improve meaningful participation or not so that we have a set of things that we've agreed hopefully that we want and we can test the various ideas that come up against those uh, uh, goals or values um, and there's you know they're sort of obvious what they would be things that are related to strengthening democracy um, I would hope that we would have um, some agreements about, is this the kind of thing you meant, Anna? About decision-making. So for example, if a I've been in many groups where there's kind of do it, do it, you gotta decide, you gotta decide, and people are kind of getting new information as some new thing came up. If something doesn't have to be decided at that exact meeting, put it off until the next meeting if people that, and I think the council does that. I'm not sure it's for that purpose always, but the idea that somebody can say, I need to think about this a little more, uh, as long as it's not urgent that it be decided. A third thing I think is important that we did not do very well in the Charter Commission at all is to have a timeline so that you know when you have to end and you count backwards from that. Okay, we have to have a draft X amount of months or weeks before that that we're gonna review it. Especially if you wanna have public input, you have to have a schedule so that you, because at the end we were just, we were, I don't, well, this is a public, I don't wanna, uh, <laughs> we were rushing through things, let's just say. And the school committee, for example, well, I don't need to give too much example, but the school committee didn't have a chance to weigh in on the two-year terms until after it was too late for them, for us to change it because we were so late. So I think a schedule and somebody managing it and maybe somebody helping the chair manage it so that sometimes it helps to have two or three people in a group who have different roles uh, for management. So somebody's facilitating the meeting and someone else is meeting between meetings and saying, wait a minute, we said we had to get this done by this time. So that it's a, it feels gracious and there's time for public input and changing some details uh, after you get important input, like the school committee, really important input. Uh, you, so those are the three things that come to my mind, not having thought of that before at least. Thank you. Guidelines, 
meeting process and a schedule. Those are three things that I would strongly advocate for. And then you have a structure so that you can, you know, rock and roll and have all the kinds of debates you want within that, but you have a meeting structure, you have guidelines and you have a calendar so that you, you Thank finish you. in a calm, calm way. Thank you. Last question. Uh, what else would you like us to know about you that makes you a strong candidate for the <laughs> Um, I don't know what you don't know about me. Uh, I think I've had myriad experiences in town. I care a lot about democracy. I have been very involved in the town. Uh, when I was, I know the town really well. I know the protest side. When I was 13, I was in my first demonstration with my, Francis Crow and my father organized to protest town meeting because they had a budget item to build fallout shelters. This was in the late fifties. And <laughs> uh, my father was a big peace advocate and Francis Crow was a family friend because, and uh, there were, and I went, walked into the living room and my father said, come in, you need to come in and listen to what, sit down. And they, so I was at my first protest with holding a picket sign at 13 with my father and a bunch of other people. And the town meeting didn't, didn't fill the fallout shelters. <laughs> so, you know, that's not necessarily a great thing. Uh, so this whole thing of having been around for a while, that in itself isn't so hot. I mean, necessarily it's, it's just who I am. And, uh, Sometimes I think I could have been more imaginative and moved away or something, but I've been really involved in this town for a long time. I've changed my mind about things. I've, I'm good at pitching in um, and helping out, uh, maybe a little too much, um, but I think I bring a positive energy. And as I said, at the answer to your first question, I have a huge, huge amount of meeting experience. <laughs> And I have these techniques for not talking too much in meetings because I can often I have something to say, but I don't I understand that I need to manage my participation. So I have all these little techniques, like if there are 10 people in the meeting, I'll like and after I've spoken, I'll make a little mark on the, my notes and until there are 10 more marks. I won't speak unless someone asks me a question, but I try to really manage my participation so that because my personality is to participate. And so I have to do that in a wise way. Thank so you. then go, oh my God, there she goes off again on her thing that she keeps saying over and over. I try not to say the same thing over and over. <laughs> anyway, any other questions? Meg, no, that's it. Thank you so much for <laughs> with us. Uh, it's It's been a pleasure to hear from you. We appreciate you taking the time. Thank you so much. And I hope you should take a look at the league document. It's very interesting. It's really interesting. They put a lot of energy into it, this little committee. So thank you. Thank you so now much. You, yeah, bye. Bye. Um, all right, folks, we've got our last interview of the day who is here early. Um, if we can bring Marcus in, that would be great. And Marcus, thank you for joining us earlier than uh, you signed up for. All right, awesome. Um, Marcus, when you can, if you can unmute, and if you'd like to turn your camera on, that's fine. Um, we're just making sure we can hear you. Yeah, um, thank you. Sorry, I don't know if you want to see me. I just got back from the gym. So <laughs> please We'd forgive. We'd love to see you. <laughs> uh, yeah, you might not. You might regret that, unfortunately. So uh, uh, appearances are not part of the the judgment process. So good. That's, safe. that's very good then. Excellent. Um, okay. So Marcus, we've got six questions for you today and we ask that you keep your responses to each of them to between one to two minutes. Um, because we are seeking to make sure all of the interviews are very consistent, we will not have the opportunity for back and forth or follow-up questions. Um, we just have the, the six straightforward ones that we are asking everyone, if that sounds okay to you. Uh, sounds perfect, thank you. All right, so starting off, question one. What is your understanding of the role of the Charter Review Committee? Are there particular areas that you see as strengths, weaknesses, or missing elements to the Charter? Um, I'm honestly, you know, so in my work as, uh, in my work, I'm a trusted advisor to the US government, and I really have to kind of go into reviews and things with an open book. 
And I think that this really is one of those situations. If I come in with any pre preconceived notions, I feel that uh, I can, you know, we or myself specifically can miss aspects that uh, get overlooked. And I would rather kind of keep an open mind and an open book from day one. Uh, obviously, I have heard a lot of input across the town on what uh, people believe are necessary improvements and things like that. But I don't want to kind of uh, prejudge the situation until we really get into the nitty gritty and see what's going on. Um, so I really feel that that's kind of where I'd like to stay for now and then use the, uh, you know, the participation process that we, that is set forth in the, uh, the remit as well as additional, you know, research as part of the, the committee to kind of really get and in, delve into that. So. Thank you. Based on the selection guidance, what experiences or skills do you feel you bring to the Charter Review Committee that can make it successful? Yeah, so um, like I say, my work, I'm a sort of a consultant um, and I work across uh, US government, um, across unions, and uh, we're looking specifically the work I'm doing right now, we're looking to deploy you know, uh, systems into the US um, national airspace. And so in order to achieve that, you know, we have to achieve a common ground. And uh, that can be very difficult when you have many different um, areas trying to pull you in a different direction. So I like to work to achieve that success rather than a particular goal in mind, right? We're looking at um, the public good for the work I do. And in, in some respects, I feel that this is work that will uh, lead us to the public good as well, so. Sorry, my mute button hit for me. Um, how do you stay informed and up to date about town affairs? Uh, I have long taken, I work from home and uh, I always have town meetings on in the background. I hate to, I don't hate to say it. I. Well, maybe, I, yeah, I should admit it here anyway. Uh, I tend to watch a lot of town meetings um, and continue to kind of keep informed in that respect. Uh, a lot of the printed media as well, just to kind of understand, you know, where people lie outside of what you see. You know, it's always good to understand what uh, people outside of your viewpoint uh, think and how they would like to proceed so that you can kind of understand both sides of whatever issues at play. Thank you. Can you tell us about an experience that you have had collaborating with a group? What did you like about it? What did you find challenging? Uh, yeah, I can actually, I can talk about uh, an experience today. Um, I, we are trying to take systems up into New York, in New York um, area airports. And so that involves uh, bringing in the, uh, the air traffic controllers union, uh, bringing in management from the air traffic control, bringing in engineers such as myself, and as well as the federal government who are running the show to kind of get to a point. So the outcome, the ideal point of this is putting a system into these airports in a very short fashion. However, that's never simple. And so specifically today, we were looking at trying to uh, resurrect some fixes at the, into the system that might help bring things forward. Part of that process as we were talking through it, getting the input from across all of these stakeholders, you know, we realized that there was potential shortfalls. So took a step back, reviewed our options in that, continued to make progress in the discussions, as well as realizing that we needed to bring more people in. So it's not just a case of, yes, let's go, let's get it done. We see what we can get done now. You know, there's a very, very much a thoughtful process in how we work out. And I'd like to bring that to what we're going to be just, you know, bring that to the, this committee, you know, make sure that we bring all voices to the room as well as ensure that we maintain that final goal, you know, the, the public good in our process. So. Thank you. If you could please briefly describe two or three activities that you believe should be part of the work plan for the Charter Review Committee. Yeah, thank you. I, I strongly believe 
that uh, public participation in this process is um, paramount, right? I mean, we all live in this town and we all have something to say about how it's run or where we'd like it to go. I think we need to ensure that those uh, ideas are heard and taken into consideration. So, that, I mean, to me, that's one area of that. But there's also the other area where we need to do some discovery, right? So there was the initial discovery when, when we were putting together, the town was putting together the initial charter. And that was very much at that time. Time has passed. And so I'd like to kind of understand what other towns have done with their charter review processes, uh, how we fit into the modern landscape in Massachusetts. You know, we, we, we aren't a town anymore, you know, albeit in name. How does that impact where we are um how do we feel that we can grow as a as a town um into the future as well so okay awesome um last question right george i didn't miss any i'm now i'm checking you got me paranoid okay um what else would you like us to know about you that makes you a strong candidate for the charter review committee uh i try to bring a lot to the table, uh, whether it be research, understanding, um, listening, uh, and uh, trying to encourage others to bring their ideas to the table. Uh, I, I feel that, you know, the more we participate, the better the outcome. And so really trying to engage that process, engage that amongst people. Um, sorry, my computer's dinging at me. Um, we can move forward as a group and get to the goal within the remit that we've been set, right? I mean, we're not here to kind of reinvent the wheel. Um, we have a charter when we need to review it, but there has been limits set by um, by you as a council, so, and the charter itself. So let's kind of work to that and move forward. All right. Um, Marcus, thank you so much for, for speaking with us. We really appreciate it. We, and, and thank you again for joining us earlier than um, anticipated. Um, we, this is the end of our interviews. We'll be deliberating tomorrow and we are not the deciding body. We make a recommendation to the council um, and this will be on their agenda at a later date. So uh, we've got a little bit more time before we get final word back to folks, but thank you very, very much for your engagement so far in this process. Thank you. Um, Athena can bump you back to the audience or you can press leave, either one works. Um, and committee, I've got you for like 30 more seconds, I think, if that's okay. All right, so um, that concludes our interviews. I hope folks like me have been taking copious notes. Um, we will be convening tomorrow to deliberate. I ask that you please revisit your notes, revisit the SOIs. Um, when we come forward tomorrow, I will be asking you, um, to share with me for folks who were uh, around when we did the school committee member appointments, we're gonna be doing the similar method. I'm going to ask you to share your candidate choices. Um, you do not need to say that you have nine choices if you do not believe that there are nine candidates that you would like to put forward, but I'd like to know who your top choices are, uh, not before the meeting. Please do not tell me this before the meeting. That would be open meeting law violation. Don't, don't tell me at our meeting tomorrow, please come prepared with the names of the folks that you would like to put forward um, to recommend. And we will be doing tallies at our meeting tomorrow. Are there any other questions about that? Any other questions about anything else? Okay. Um, with that, I, I will entertain a motion to adjourn at 8.13 PM. So moved. Thank you. Is there a second? second. <laughs> Um, oh my gosh, I think that was Pat, but I swear that a second came from Athena. Um, all right, so second was Councillor Ette, and I'm gonna call the vote. Uh, Lynn? Yes. Councillor Ette? Aye. Pat DeAngelis? Aye. Councillor Ryan? Aye. And I am an aye as well. This meeting is adjourned at 8.13. Thank you all very much. Thank you, everyone. See you tomorrow, last one of the week. <laughs>